Today we're going to be doing geometry of straight lines. We're going to be learning about angles at a point. We're going to start off by looking at adjacent angles, complementary angles, and supplementary angles, and finding out what those are. So first, let's have a look at adjacent angles. So over here, I've got a pair of adjacent angles. Adjacent angles, remember adjacent means next to each other. So adjacent angles are angles that are at the same point, and they are next to each other, sharing a common side. Okay, so those are these are this is an example over here of angle A1 and angle A2. They are adjacent to each other, they're at the same point, A, and they are next to each other, sharing a common side. Okay. Then we have over here another pair of adjacent angles, but these ones are special because they are forming a right angle together. They are complementary. Complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. Okay. Now, complementary angles not necessarily have to be adjacent to each other. In this example, they are adjacent to each other, but you do also get complementary angles that aren't adjacent to each other. But in this example over here, we have a pair of complementary adjacent angles. Remember, complementary means that they add up to 90 degrees. Over here, we have a pair of supplementary adjacent angles. They are sitting on a straight line, and they are supplementary because they add up to 180 degrees. When you have two angles that add up to 180 degrees, that means that they are supplementary. Now again, supplementary angles don't necessarily have to be adjacent. In this example, they are adjacent because they are next to each other. Okay, then over here, if you've got two straight lines that are perpendicular to each other, then the adjacent angles that are formed are supplementary because they're on a straight line, but they're also both going to be equal to 90 degrees. Okay, so in this case, I've got angle D1 and angle D2. They are adjacent because they are at the same point and they share a common side. And they are both going to be equal to 90 degrees because this line is perpendicular to that line over there. Okay, so now I want you to fill in this table. You're going to complete it by filling in the complements of each of these angles and the supplements of each of these angles. Remember, complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. So the complement over here is going to be the angle that you can add to this one to get 90 degrees. So when you add this one and that one, you must get 90 degrees. And the supplement is the one that you must be able to add to 10 to get 180 degrees. Okay, so you're going to fill that in. I'm going to give you two minutes to complete that table.
Okay, so let's take a look at what you should have got for each of those. So the complement of 10 degrees is 80 degrees because 10 plus 80 is 90. And then the supplement of 10 degrees is 170 degrees because, 100, because 10 plus 170 is 180 degrees. Then the complement of 25 degrees is 65 degrees because 25 plus 65 is 90. And the complement of 25, the supplement of 25 degrees is 155 degrees because 25 plus 155 is 180. Then the complement of 40 degrees is 50 degrees. 40 plus 50 is 90. And then the supplement of 40 degrees is 140 degrees. 40 plus 140 is 180. Then the complement of 48 is going to be 42 degrees because 48 plus 42 is 90. And then the supplement of 48 is going to be 132 degrees because 48 plus 132 is 180. The complement of 90 is 0 degrees because I don't need to add anything to 90 to get 90. And the supplement of 90 degrees is 90 degrees because 90 plus 90 is 180. Then for x, think about what we, how we got each of these over here. Every time I got these values over here, I got them by saying 90 minus whatever I had here gives me that. 90 minus 10 is 80, 90 minus 25 is 65, 90 minus 40 is 50, 90 minus 48 is 42, 90 minus 90 is zero. So 90 minus x, is whatever I'm going to get over here. So that's just going to be 90 minus x. Okay, then over here, same thing. What I did to 10 to get 170 is I said 180 minus 10 gives me 170. 180 minus 25 gives me 155. 180 minus 40 gives me that. 180 minus 48 gives me that. 180 minus 90 gives me that. So this is going to be 180 minus x. So that's what you should have got for each of those values in this table. Now let's have a look at angles around a point. Okay, so over here, I have got the point O. Okay, so over here, sometimes uh, diagrams can be drawn like this, where if you've got a point that is labeled O, the O can actually be drawn almost like a circle on top of that point where everything intersects. Okay. It just means that we can fit everything more easily in the angles around that point. So I've got angle 01, 02, 03, 04, 05, 06. They all fill up all the spaces around the point O. Okay. When you've got angles around a point, then the sum of those angles is 360 degrees because this is a complete revolution. Remember when we learned about angles, we learned that a revolution is 360 degrees. So the sum of all of these angles is 360 degrees. Okay, so over here I can say angle O1 plus angle O2 plus angle O3 plus angle O4 plus angle O5 plus angle O6. All of those angles add up to 360 degrees. And my reason for that, remember anytime you make a statement in geometry, you have to give a reason. So the reason you'll use is angles round a point. Okay, so now let's have a look at an example where we're actually going to use this. So in this example, we have got point O, then here we've got A, B, and C, and we've been told that angle o -A -A -O -C, sorry, is 180 degrees, angle BOC is 95 degrees, and angle AOB is X, and we need to work out the value of X, or the size of X. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by saying that all of these angles, because they are all around a point and there's no empty angles that we don't have any value for, we've got 170 for this angle, we've got 95 for that angle, and we've got x for that angle. So I can add all of those up. I can say that they must all add up to 360 degrees. So 170 plus 95 plus x must all add up to give me 360 degrees. And my reason that I can say that is angles around a point. Okay, now I've got an equation that I can solve to work out what x is. So I'm going to take the 170 and the 95, get rid of those on this side. That gives me x equals 360 degrees minus 170 degrees 
minus 95 degrees, and now I can just work that out. So I have 360 minus 170 minus 95, that gives me 95 degrees. So that means that x over here is 95 degrees. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a couple that you're going to work on for yourself. The first one you're going to do is this one over here. You have got angle or point O again. Here you've got P, R, and Q. You need to work out the value or the size of this angle, angle P, O, Q, which is a reflex angle over there. So you need to work out that angle, which is labeled A. And I'm going to give you one minute to work that out. Okay, so let's have a look and see what you got for that. So over here, I've got my diagram. I've got point O. I've been given that PO is perpendicular to OR, so that's 90 degrees over there. I've been told that this is 72 degrees, and I need to work out the size of A, which is this angle over here. So I know that they are all angles around the point O, which means that they must add up to 360 degrees. So A plus 90 degrees plus 72 degrees all adds up to 360 degrees and my reason is angles around a point okay now i'm going to go and i'm going to solve for a so i've got 360 minus 90 minus 72 let me just write that over here quickly so i take the 300 the 90 and the 72 and I get rid of them over here and that gives me 198 degrees so that's what you should have got for question a that angle a or the size of a is 198 degrees okay so now let's go and have a look at the next example so in this example you've got again point o and then you've got over here a, B, C, D, E, and F. Now, in this case, you have to work out the value of X. And you've been given all of the angles as sizes in terms of X. Okay, but you're going to use the same concept and you're going to work out what X is. Okay, so I'm going to give you one minute again to solve this problem. Okay, so let's see how you did with that example. So over here, I have got my diagram there. This angle is 3x plus 20. This is 2x, x, 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 and 2x. So I have to add all of these up because they are all angles around the point O, and they must all add up to 360 degrees. So I'm going to have 3x plus 20 degrees 
that's this angle over here, plus 2x plus x plus x plus x and then plus 2x. So those are all of the angles around the point O. Now I'm going to go and make that all equal to 360 degrees because they are angles around a point. Okay, and now I've got an equation that I can go and solve. I don't want this 20 degrees to be here. I want to get rid of it, so I'm going to subtract 20 on both sides, and then I'm going to be left with 3x plus 2x plus x plus x plus x plus 2x equals 360 degrees, um, subtracting 20 degrees on both sides. So now on this side I've got 3 plus 2 is 5, 6, 7, 8 plus another 2 is 10x altogether. And then 360 minus 20 is 340 degrees. Then I'm going to divide by 10 on both sides and that gives me x equals 34 degrees. So now I know that the, the value of x is 34 degrees. Okay, so that's what you should have got for that example. So that's how we do angles around a point. Now let's have a look at angles on a straight line. Okay, now when we're talking about angles on a straight line, we have angles like this over here. Anytime you have angles which are next to each other like this, and they form a straight line like that over there, they always will add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so those angles I can say angle A1 plus angle A2 plus angle A3 plus angle A4 must add up to 180 degrees because they are angles on a straight line. So this is the reason that we give when we're working with angles on a straight line. Okay, so now we're going to do an example where we use that concept. So over here I have got the line ABC, which is a straight line, and I have got this angle ABD is 65 degrees, this angle CBE is 10 degrees, and we need to work out X, which is angle DBE. Okay, so now first what I'm going to do is write down that when I add those three angles up, I must get 180 degrees. So this is my diagram over here. So I'm going to take the 65 degrees, the X and the 10 degrees, and I'm going to add them all up, and that, gives, that must give me 180 degrees. So 65 plus X plus 10 degrees equals 180 degrees. And my reason is angles on a straight line. Okay. Now I'm going to go and solve this equation. So I want to get x on its own, I want to get rid of the 65 and the 10, so that it's me x equals 180 degrees minus 65 degrees minus 10 degrees. So therefore x is equal to 180 minus 65 minus 10 is 105 degrees. Okay, so that's what you should get for that example over there. So now I'm going to give you a couple again that you're going to do for yourself. Okay, the first one that you're going to do for yourself is this one over here. You need to work out the value of B in this diagram. I'm going to give you one minute to solve this problem. Okay, so let's see how you went with that question. So first of all, I've got line PQR, which is a straight line. I've been told this angle is 83. This is a right angle, so it's 90 degrees. And I need to work out the value of B. So I'm going to say B plus 83 degrees plus 90 degrees 
must all add up to 180 degrees and my reason is angles on a straight line okay now that I've got my equation I can solve for B so I'm going to get B on its own so that's B equals 180 degrees minus 83 degrees minus 90 degrees so therefore B is equal to 180 minus 83 minus 90 that gives me 7 degrees okay so now I know what B is equal to right so now I'm going to give you another one that you're going to do for yourself in this one you need to work out the value of x and all of these angles have been written in terms of x okay so I'm going to give you one minute to solve this problem Okay, so let's see how that question went. So over here, I've got my diagram where angle ABD is X, angle DBE is 2X plus 30 degrees, and angle EBC is 2X. I need to work out the value of X. So I'm going to add all three of those up, and they must all be equal to 180 degrees. So X plus 2X plus 30 degrees plus 2x so I've got over here x is that one over there 2x plus 30 is this one over here and 2x is that one and they must all add up to 180 degrees and my reason is angles on a straight line okay so now that I've got that I can go and solve for x I'm going to get rid of this 30 over here so I'm going to have x plus 2x plus 2x equals 180 degrees then I take that and I minus on both sides so 30 degrees and that gives me 5x equals 150 degrees if I divide by 5 on both sides that means x is equal to 30 degrees so that's what you should have got for x in that example now let's have a look at vertically opposite angles we get vertically opposite angles when we have straight lines that cross over each other. So here's an example over here where we've got straight lines that are intersecting with each other. They're crossing over each other and we have got vertically opposite angles. The vertically opposite angles are the angles that are directly across from each other, directly opposite each other across that point of intersection. So angle 2 and 5, angle O2 and angle O5 are vertically opposite, angle O1 and angle O4 are vertically opposite, angle O3 and angle O6 are vertically opposite. Those angles are vertically opposite to each other and they are going to be equal to each other. Vertically opposite angles will always be equal to each other. So over here I can say that angle O1, this angle over here, is equal to angle O4. Angle O2, this one over here, is equal to angle O5 over there. And angle O3 over there is equal to angle O6 over there. And my reason for being able to say all of those statements is vertically opposite angles. Okay, so whenever you are working with straight lines that are intersecting each other like this, they will form vertically opposite angles. And those angles will always be equal to each other. Okay, so over here I've got an example where we are going to have to work out the values of x and y. Now in order to use vertically opposite angles, like I said, the angles have got, or the lines have got to be straight that are intersecting each other. So if you look at this line over here, that is not going to result in vertically opposite angles because it does not intersect all the way through and cut all the way through. It's not a straight line cutting through because if you try to make this as a line, it's not straight over there. So this one also is not going to be a straight line over there. These two lines are straight lines. So this one over here 
is a straight line and this one over here is a straight line okay so what I can do is I can say any angle that is opposite any other angle across the the point O as a result of these two straight lines they will be vertically opposite so X is vertically opposite to the 20 degrees over here okay so those two angles I can say are going to be equal to each other okay so let's have a look at that over here so here I've got my diagram let me just do this quickly so you can see so this is my one straight line that I have that I can work with over there and this is my other straight line okay the other two lines are not straight lines that are intersecting with each other or anything if you look over here this line does not carry on on the side and this line does not carry on on that side beyond the point O so those are not going to result in vertically opposite angles but what I can say is that this angle Will be equal to that angle and I can also say that this angle that whole angle is equal to this whole angle if I wanted to if that would help me okay so you can have virtually opposite angles which are bisected or um, cut up like this so over here this angle is broken up into two parts this angle is broken up into two parts as well but I can look at vertically opposite angles like that if I need to. In this case, it's not going to be helpful to me, but it sometimes is. Okay, well, what I'm going to do now is I'm first going to work out the value of x. x is this over here, and it is directly opposite or vertically opposite the 20 over here. So I'm going to say x is equal to 20 degrees. And my reason is vertically opposite angles. Okay, so that's nice and easy. I can just say the one is equal to the other and give the reason. I don't have to do any calculations or anything. I just can say that they're equal to each other. Now I need to work out the value of y. Now, like I said, we can only use vertically opposite angles when we have straight lines that are crossing each other. So if I look at the side or the, the angle y is this angle over here. There, there. I don't have a line that continues like this I don't have a line like that so I can't use vertically opposite angles this angle would be equal to that but I don't have that so what I need to do is I need to use another way of working out what y is okay I'm not going to be able to use vertically opposite angles to work out y so let's think about what else we've learned today we've learned about angles around a point that's not going to help me here because I don't know all of the angles I don't know this angle over here if I did know this angle, I could use angles around a point. But I have also learned about angles on a straight line. So what I can do is I can look at the angles that Y is with on a straight line. I can choose the straight line over here and I can say it's Y plus 60 plus X, which we said is 20 degrees. So remember, once you've worked something out, you can write it on the diagram. So this is 20 degrees. I know that now. Okay, so I can say y plus 60 plus 20 on the line AOD because the line AOD is straight. Or I can say on the line BOE, also a straight line, 60 plus y plus 20 degrees. It comes to the same thing. So I'm going to work out y by using the angles on a straight line. So 20 degrees plus 60 degrees plus y must all add up to 180 degrees because of angles on a straight line and now I can go and solve for y so I can take the 20 and the 60 get rid of those on that side so I can say y equals 180 degrees minus 20 degrees minus 60 degrees so therefore y is equal to 100 degrees so that's what you should get for angle y in this example so remember when you're working with vertically opposite angles you can only work with where you have straight lines that are crossing each other like that. If you've got another line that is also meeting at that same point, but it's not crossing over at that point, you don't get vertically opposite angles then. So then you have to use other methods. You can use angles on a straight line, or you can use angles around a point. Normally you can use angles on a straight line, and it's quicker and easier because you have to add up fewer angles, and you're only adding up to 180 instead of 360. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to work on for yourself. So the first one, is this one over here we have got 
the line POR and the line SOQ and they are intersecting at the point O, you need to work out the value of A. So I'm going to give you one minute to work that out. Okay, so let's see how you did with that example. Okay, so this was nice and simple. All you had to do was take the two angles that are vertically opposite each other and say that they're equal to each other. So first, I can say where I have PR intersecting with SQ, I've got vertically opposite angles. They are these angles over here, 108 degrees and A. So I can say A is equal to 108 degrees and my reason for that is vertically opposite angles. So that's all you have to do for question A. Right, now question B. It's this one over here. Okay, now you have to work out the value of X in this example where you've got AC intersecting BD at the point O. And you have to work out what X is, where both of these angles have been written in terms of X. So I'm going to give you one minute to solve this problem. Okay, so let's see what you got for that example. So here we've got AC intersecting BD at the point O. These two angles are vertically opposite each other, so they are going to be equal to each other. So I can say X plus 60 degrees is equal to 3X minus 20 degrees. And my reason is vertically opposite angles. Okay, once we've got that, we can then go and solve our equation. So I'm going to get my x's on the one side. So I'm going to take the x's to the side. I've got x. Then I might, I'm going to subtract 3x on both sides. So minus 3x equals negative 20 degrees. And then I'm going to subtract the 60 on both sides. That gives me minus 60 degrees. So this is negative 2x equals negative 80 degrees. So therefore, if I divide by negative 2 on both sides, I get positive 40 degrees. So x is 40 degrees. Now, if you had done this the other way around, so if you had said that angle first equals this angle, where we have the angle that is, has, or the one that has more x's on the left and the one that has less x's on the right, then we wouldn't have had this negative to worry about. We would have had 2x equals 80. That would have been easier to work out. So that is something you can do, is you can make sure that you write it the way around that you want to so that you end up with not having to worry about negatives. But either way, you will get the same answer. Okay, so that was question B. Now let's go and look at question C. Now in this one over here, we have got three straight lines that are intersecting each other. I've got AD, BE, and FC all intersecting at the point O. You need to work out the value of A, the value of B, the value of C, 
and the value of d. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this problem. Okay, so let's see how you did with that question. So in this example, we had to first work out A. Now, if you look over here, I've got the straight line AD, I've got the straight line BE, and I've got the straight line FC. Okay, so first I'm looking at this angle, which is between this line and that line. This angle is vertically opposite that angle, angle A over there. So A is equal to 95 degrees. And the reason I know that is because they are vertically opposite. Okay, so now I can go and fill that in over here. So this is 95 degrees. Okay, next I'm going to work out B. Now B is this angle over here. It is opposite that angle. So they are vertically opposite. So they're also going to be equal. So I can just say B equals 74 degrees. And my reason there is also vertically opposite angles. Okay, so now I know what A is and I know what B is. So that is 74 degrees over there. Okay, once I've got those two angles, I need to now work out what C is. But if you look, C is opposite D. Now I can't use those to work each other out, at least not yet. Once I know C, I'll be able to use it to work out what D is. Okay, but I need to work out C in a different way. So I need to work C out using what I know about angles on a straight line or angles around a point. Now I can't do angles around a point because I don't know all of the angles. I've got two angles that I don't know, but I do know that on a straight line, angles must add up to 180 degrees. Now I can look at any of these straight lines that C is basically on. So I've got this line over here, 95 plus C is plus 74, or I've got this line over here, C plus 74 plus uh, 95 over there, or I've got this line over here where I've got C plus 95 plus 74. It all comes to the same thing. It doesn't matter which straight line I use so long as I have got C in my equation. So I'm going to have C plus, if I do this line over there, C plus 74 plus 95. And that all adds up to 180 degrees because they are on a straight line. Okay, once I know that, I can then go and solve for C. So I'm going to take my 74 and my 95 across and subtract them on the other side or on both sides. That's 180 degrees minus 74 degrees minus 95 degrees.
and that gives me 11 degrees. So now I know that C is 11 degrees. So if I fill that in over here, now I can use that to work out what D is. Now the easiest way to work out D, it's not the only way, the easiest way to work out D is to use vertically opposite angles. I could also work out D using angles in a straight line, or I could now work out D using the angles around a point. But the easiest way is vertically opposite angles because I can just say that they're equal to each other. I don't have to do any calculations to work out D if I use vertically opposite angles. So now I can say D is equal to 11 degrees because it is vertically opposite C, which is 11 degrees, which we just worked out now. Okay, so D is 11 degrees and my reason is vertically opposite angles, vertically opposite angles. Okay, so that is how you do that question. Okay, now the last question for today is this one over here. We have now got AD is a straight line, BE is a straight line, and it needs to be careful over here. This line and that line over there, they do not form a straight line. You need to work out the values of x, y, and z in this question. I'm going to give you two minutes to solve this. Okay, so the first thing you should have seen over here to work out x is that this line over here and this line over here are both straight lines. They are intersecting at the point O, which means that this angle is equal to that angle. So angle five, the five degree angle is equal to x, which means I know already what x is going to be equal to. So over here, I've got x, is 5 degrees and my reason that I know that is because they are vertically opposite angles okay so that I can fill in here straight away I can say this is 5 degrees okay now that I know that I need to work out what Y and Z are but unlike this one over here I could use vertically opposite now I'm not going to be able to use vertically opposite because I don't have an angle that is vertically opposite the Y the Y and the Z are not vertically opposite each other because this is not a straight line okay so I can't use vertically opposite now even if I knew what one of those are and once I work out Y I won't be able to use it to work out Z using vertically opposite because it's not a straight line so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to use angles on a straight line to work out what y is. I can either use the straight line going 82 plus y plus x, which is 5, or I can use that straight line, which is 5 plus 82 plus y, giving me the same thing. Okay, so it doesn't matter which way around I do it, it doesn't matter which straight line I use, so long as I am using the y. So I'm going to have y plus 82 degrees plus 5 degrees, 
and that adds up to 180 degrees because they are angles on a straight line. Okay, so now that I know that, I can go and solve for y. So I'm going to take my 82 and my 5, get rid of those. So y equals 180 degrees minus 82 degrees minus 5 degrees. And that gives me y equals 180 minus 82 minus 5 is 93 degrees. Okay, so now I know what y is over here. That is 93 degrees. Now, what I could do now is I could use, all, now that I know all of the angles except for Z around this point, I could use angles around a point adding up to 360. But that's going to be longer than using a straight line because then I only have to add up three angles and they have to add up to 180. So it wouldn't matter. I could still use the angles around a point. It's just not the most time efficient way to do it. So I'm going to use the angles on a straight line. I'm going to say these three angles over here must add up to 180 because they are on a straight line. Or I could use these three angles over there, adding up to 180 because they're on a straight line. I can use any of those sets of angles because they are on straight lines like that. Okay, so I'm going to say 5 degrees plus Z plus 60 degrees. equals 180 degrees and my reason is because they are angles on a straight line. Okay and then I can go and solve for Z. So that is Z equals 180 degrees minus 5 degrees minus 60 degrees. Therefore Z is equal to 115 degrees. And that's what you should have got for question D. And that is how we work with angles at a point in straight line geometry. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.